Hello Widget Watchers, welcome back to another video. In this video we are going to take a look at Injectable, and the basic implementation of it. And you can find all the above code which I've used here in my blog, so you can also follow that, I'll provide the link in the description and pinned comment. So here I have my code open, and the app is installed in my simulator. Now when you press on this floating action button, always a new odd number is going to be generated. And always you are going to receive an odd number. And when I go here and change it to the random number repository, and then restart this application, and then tap onto this floating action button, then always even number is going to be generated. So we have seen that, we can successfully change the dev random number repository with the random number repository. And when we have changed this the output of our application is changed. So this is perfect all the time we want this kind of behavior that, app should behave in certain way in development mode. And another way in the production mode. But here as you can see we need to do this task manually, like we are manually setting up the repository. So we don't want this behavior. So for fixing this issue, injectable come into place. Now let me show you, that how this code is working differently in different environment. Now here I have this random number change notifier, this takes in D random number repository. And apart from this, it is very simple that we have just a value and getter for it. And then we have this change random number function. So this function will give the generated random number, this get random. Number method we are calling from the dRandom repository, which is the abstract class. Okay, so when you go to this dRandom number repository, then you will find that it is an abstract class, which has only one method as the random number. And this class is getting used by the dev random number repository, which is going to use for development. And the random number repository, which is going to use for the production. So this was the basic implementation of what we have done so fat. Now let's the injectable in this code. So for doing that, first come into pubspec.yaml file, and here we, we need to use the getit and injectable packages, because it is going to help in creating the dependency injection and injectable. After that we need to add some dev dependency, so let's also add that. The first thing which we want is the build runner and after that we will need to add the injectable generator. Now tap tap onto the pub get option, so that it will get all the dependencies. And then after this here create a new file as injectables, now come into this file, let's first create the instance of get it. So here I'm creating the instance of get it, and for creating the instance just use get it dot instance. So that it will create the instance. Now we need to create a function and we will annotate it with injectable. So let's add the injectable here. Then add the brackets, and in these brackets we will add few more configuration in a minute. But before that let's create the function, which is going to be void and configure dependency. And this function is going to take the current environment, so add that as parameter. And after that just use the getit.init and then inside it just pass the environment. Okay so yes we have done that now here let's add few configuration for the injectables. So first let's add the initializer name which is going to be init. Then prefer relative imports make it to true. And then as extension and make it also true. Now import the injectable package, so this error will go. Now you think that why this get it, is showing error so this is showing error because we have not run the build runner. So when you come to the terminal and from here, just add this command as flutter run, build runner, watch and then double hyphen, and delete conflicting, outputs. And then press on to enter, and it will generate the required file which is necessary. Okay so as you can see we have this injectable.config file is generated. And this is the generated file. And we don't need to edit this file. Now come into this injectable file and from here import the init. 
and you can see this is going to be imported from our newly created file. Now here we have a env error. You need to mark it as environment. So just make it that, now here we will create the abstract class as env, and this file will contain those two, dev environment and prod environment. So I have created that now. Let's save this code, and now we need to mark this d random number depository as injectable. Then we need to bind this dev random number repository to be run always in dev mode, not in production mode. So we need to add this for binding. So first come into the dev number repository, and here let's mark it as injectable, and then here we need to assign its service type, so it's going to be the ds random number repository service. So I have added that and now we need to give its environment, that in which environment this should be run. So this is our development mode environment, so here add the list and inside it add the env.dev, so that it's always going to be run in the development mode. Ok now copy this line of code, and do the same for the random number repository. Just mark it as the prod and import the necessary files. Then after this we also need to mark our change notifier class as injectable and then save the code so that our build runner will work properly. And then you can see we have the different modes available with their different services. So here dev random number repositories is going to work in dev mode, or random number repository is going to work in the prod mode. And this is for the default. So this was it. Now let's come into the main.dart file and from here above this run app, Let's call that configure dependency method and inside this method, just pass the current environment. Ok then afterwards from here remove this random change notifier, and here use get it then random number change notifier. And that was it for this. Now when you restart the application and this is our dev mode. So whenever we press onto this floating action button, odd number should be generated. So whenever we are pressing you can see, odd number is generating all the time. And now change the mode to prod, and when you will save the code so you can see even number is going to be generated all the time, so this was it for the injectables. And if you found this video helpful then you can like this video and comment down and you can also comment that what you want to learn the next.